All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode six of the Whiskey Ways podcast. I'm your host, Dylan, and I have my co-host. You're Alex in the house. All right. right. As you can see, we're missing number three, Rhett. Um, I don't know what's going on there, to be honest. Don't know where he's at. Unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, haven't heard from him today. Um, But anyways, the show must go on. Uh, No hard feelings, Rhett, you know. We still love you, and we'll be ready when you come back for the next episode, or if we do gotta, a live. Got to do it for the fans. You know yeah, I mean? you know, we got to keep rolling. All right, so uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, this week, we uh, we have a fresh bottle for you guys. It is uh, High West American Prairie Bourbon. So uh, High West is coming out of, uh, I believe it is Park City, Utah, um, is where their company's based. Um, so this is coming straight from their website, just a little bit, uh, kind of about their company. It says high West distillery was founded in 2006 by David Perkins and, and his wife, Jane, David, a former biochemist was inspired to open his own distillery after seeing the parallels between the fermentation and distilling process and his own work in biochemistry during a trip to the maker's mark distillery in Loretta, Kentucky. So definitely kind of interesting. Uh, you know, this is like. Really just a normal guy. I mean, obviously he's a biochemist, yeah. but that's pretty, pretty sick. Well, it's kind of cool because like the fact that he was a biochemist and he went to uh, kind of like a, you said it was a distillery. Yeah. He went to the maker's mark distillery. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm going to just make my own you know, whiskey. Yeah. You're like, you're just there and you're like, uh, I can do this. Yeah. You know? And uh, he did it. And he's uh, since then um, came out with a few, like a, a few whiskeys they have um the american prairie bourbon which we have they have um one called the high rye uh and then another one called um i think it's just campfire i think it's just high west uh high west campfire and it's like a it's like a supposed to be like a kind of a smoky blend uh blended whiskey but uh yeah so since then in 2015 um they uh they won a good little bit a good few awards um they won uh, the silver medal at Whiskeys of the World in 2015 for the American Prairie Bourbon and their High Rye, and they also received a double gold medal for the fifth, just the top 50 best whiskeys in 2015. So yeah, that's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, definitely some, you know, hopefully some good stuff. But really, like this, like I don't know why, but this story sounds so much like Breaking Bad to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, guy's a chemist and he's like. I can do that, you know. I'm yeah, just, I'm gonna start just stealing yeah. my own whiskey. Like I mean, Walter White out here. That's like that's what I'm imagining. It's like a whole like Walter in White his own band kind of story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like he just starts to build a still in a Winnebago, and like, I, I never really watched like too much of the Breaking Bad. Um, it's good episodes. Yeah. I I think I started to watch the first maybe five episodes, and then yeah. I don't know. I couldn't stick with it. It. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's only one of those shows like. You kind of got to give it time to develop yeah. and before you really start getting into it. But yeah. Anyways, so, yeah, so this American Prairie Bourbon uh, is named after the American Prairie Reserve, which is a nonprofit, um, I, don't know, I guess just like a nonprofit group uh, that are working to create the largest wildlife reserve in the lower 48 states. So definitely, uh, definitely like a really cool initiative. Um, you can check them out at AmericanPrairie.org. Um but yeah, it's a you know pretty uh, pretty cool like thing they're doing you know yeah. out west that they're you know working on like preserving you know all this nature and like because I mean like nowadays like especially you know in the U.S. there's just so much development and all those like you know natural natural locations and resources are pretty quickly dwindling you know so definitely uh, definitely a cool like nonprofit for you guys to check out and uh, see what all they're doing. But yeah, so I guess um, without any further ado, let's uh, toast it up to week six yeah. and uh, get at it and see what this stuff's about. Definitely. definitely uh, this one smells it good. It smells nice. It smells, yeah. I like it. I like this one. For it being 92 proof? Yeah. I mean, I'm speaking way back here, Jesus. Oh, that's good. You definitely... Definitely has like a wood taste going on. Yeah, for sure. I was just about definitely to say that. Heavy on the wood. I like. When I when I I literally was breathing out, and I could, I as I was breathing out, I could kind of like smell the wood in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like that. 
<laughs> That'll put some hair on your chest. That last sip kind of woke me up. Oh shit! Ooh. All right, so we have me. I wasn't ready. We have our little ice balls here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get chilled now. Yeah, I like the cold. That's Woo. definitely definitely good stuff. Yeah. So I've been like I've been seeing this bottle for so long, and I've been wanting to get it. Just because, like, I love like that, like old school kind of vibe the bottle has to it. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like the like the the glass almost looks like it's hand blown, because like you can still see all the little particles and bubbles in the glass. Yeah, definitely a super old school, like old west vibe going on. I've been watching uh, since I've been quarantined here by myself without Bree. I've been watching uh, a lot of Hell on Wheels. So you guys know anything about that? But uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, so tell me what that show's about because I've I'm I've heard of it, so, I just never watched it. Yeah, so it's like, uh, it, you know, it's like a this guy like Colin Bohannon, he's like a um, old Confederate soldier, and it's like right after the Civil War. Okay, and he goes to work on um, the Union Pacific Railroad. And uh, okay, I think I've seen the I yeah, saw the clip of like, it on yeah, Netflix. It's like when the when the railroads are first starting after the war. And yeah. It's good. I mean, like they just like run into a bunch of like like Native Americans and like fight with them and like oh, it's it's good. Yeah, it's good. I'll have it's to yeah. I have to check it out. Right now, I'm yeah, kind of stuck on the All American show on Netflix. So, so it's only yeah. two seasons. And I mean, you've heard us, yeah, you know, blasting the TV. I know. It. I was up at I was up at like five something in the morning. I'm like up y'all's tv still going i'm like yeah this is not like them dude i mean (laughs) being that we're we're quarantined and we can't really do a lot like on nights it's so much easier to stay up so late i mean last night i really could i think i dozed a little bit but i couldn't really fall i didn't really fall asleep till like almost six o'clock yeah yeah so it's like my sleep schedule is completely backwards yeah but um well as you guys can kind of see we kind of switched up the set a little bit um, we, we actually flipped it. Um, usually we have the two windows behind us, but today we decided, you know what, still, still daylight. I know before we were doing it at night, but let's let the natural light and I kind of like it a little bit better. I do too. You know, I, we Honestly, have the, the bottle looks good. Yeah. The bottle looks really good. The lighting bottle yeah. Yeah. Looks good. So I added that a little bit of lighting just to kind of separate us from the background. So we're not like, you know, for all my filmmakers and, and everybody that does like videography and stuff you kind of know what i'm talking about but uh so we got some world whiskey awards yeah so um, uh yeah i was actually doing um some of my research on uh high west and i was reading about some of their awards and i was like you know who's who's like giving out these awards you know what i mean so and then um unbeknownst to me i uh ran into the world whiskey awards uh which actually happened on the 26th of March, so, like, very recently, and they had released, um, it was done, like, via, like, video conference, obviously, because yeah. it's a whole, whole situation we're in, but, um, yeah, so, and, uh, I just kind of, we just kind of pulled out some of the, some of the more notable ones, um, to us, I guess, you know, and some of the, some I of the heard somebody knock on the door, my bad, <laughs> uh, some of, like, the more, um, like, the more, affordable options i guess you yeah know, as far as these like war- award-winning whiskeys go because some of them do get like super expensive right like, yeah norm- normal people aren't buying it you know yeah. what i mean so and, like that like, that one uh isabella y- yeah Ar- array i think it was yeah. i don't know yeah but yeah i mean like you know it's super cool to see all these like super nice fancy expensive whiskeys but like normal people like me like dylan like all of us like we're not i'm not buying that yeah sorry about it <laughs> I'll, I'll go get some Evan Green label and drink that out the bottle. I'll yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need to get too fancy when yeah, it comes no, to whiskey, no. you know. I mean, like, five drinks, and I'm not really tasting it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyways, so we uh, pulled out some of the some of the more notables um, that kind of stood out to us uh, as far as, like, the categories go and then the winners. So, first up, we have the world's best flavored whiskey for 2020, and it is uh, – the it's – Few F E W few. I don't know. I've never really heard of them. Uh, but it's their cold cut bourbon, um, and it says uh, their little description at, uh, after it says a three gar- a three grain mash bill bourbon is cut from cask cask strength to forty six and a half percent ABV with cold brew coffee made from made by a specialty coffee maker in Chicago. That sounds really good. Yeah, and I kind of pulled this out just because I know you're a big flavored whiskey guy, but yeah, 
this sounds fantastic. Yeah. Like I want to find I want to find <laughs> this and like and I want to try it. And I want to This have sounds it something show. that I'd like to start my my mornings off with. Yeah, I'm like having I'll a bad day. My, I'd put it in my coffee. You know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like you know, like, like you know I'm what? Today's not over, like, I know today's not gonna be a great day. Let yeah, me just pour yeah. a little something in my cup. Yeah. You know. But uh definitely sounds like super interesting. Yeah. Um and I looked this one up and I found it online for like forty five bucks. Oh, that's so not bad. For a fifth, yeah. So it's it's not not it's not gonna break the bank on you. Yeah. So next up we have uh this is a pretty big category, just the world's best bourbon. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is uh from Iron Root Republic Distillery. And it's their Harbinger bourbon, um, and it, uh, so yeah, so it says it says they won the 2019 best corn award, so the best corn whiskey award. Oh, okay, okay. So they're definitely not new, um, not new to the the award scene, but um, this one, I mean, I I was reading some reviews, and this is supposed to be like one of just the most like best like most balanced kind of whiskeys, mm-hmm. um, you know that you can find now. So. But and I'm, I believe they're out of uh, out of Texas, around the Dallas area. Yeah. Um, well, Texas is a really popular area too for yeah. a lot of like yeah. up and coming uh, whiskey companies. Not Bull Not Bourbon. Bourbon. <laughs> what were they out of Kentucky? That next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Learned that one. That was kind of though. funny when you said that. You're like, yeah, this one's from uh, yeah. based out of Texas. No, <laughs> no, not quickly quite. Quickly retracted that statement. <laughs> but yeah, so um, this one, you know, I, you know, we want to try to have it on the show as well. It's gonna be a little bit harder for us to find because it's like uh, looked it up and their website saying that like it's limited to maybe like ten cities in the U.S. Like ten pretty big cities in the U.S. That yeah. You know, have either bars that have it, which is no good to us, and then liquor stores. So maybe, uh, you know, if anybody's listening um, from Texas or uh, Texas, Las Vegas, San Diego, anywhere like that, that uh, that you can find this stuff, let us know. We'll yeah. uh, send you some money. And I think you that – Send us the bottle. I, w- I was telling – talking about this before we started recording, but um, a lot of – eventually a lot of whiskeys that we – are going to want to try, like, are going to have to be shipped to us. Yeah. Because I agree. Uh, being out in Hawaii, it's just, it's we're so not. Limited. Yeah, like we're so we limited. Find here. It's a lot of the bigger named, like, Jack Daniels, Evan, Evan, yeah. what is it? Evan, Evan, uh, Evan Williams. Okay. I wanted to make sure I was going like, to say that right. Yeah. Have me. But like Honestly, I'm not even Jameson, sure I just you know, all the, all the bigger, you know, Crown, all, all the bigger whiskey companies are, are popular out here and a lot of the no names like That's you know like, high west and yeah all these you know the, the, you know few cold cut and uh iron root like we're not going to find those out here so never heard of either one of them until, if any of like, you guys so. know know where to get those or know someone like you know definitely message us and uh, we'll give you our our address so you guys can ship it to us and we can uh review it for you guys yeah That'd be awesome. And, you know, but kind of going back to, like, what you are saying about, like, the big name brands, you know, like, that's stuff that everybody's had. Everybody yeah. knows. It's, like, a household, you know, most of them are, like, household staples. Like, you know, obviously people have their taste. But, like, yeah. you know, but nine times out of ten, if you've drank whiskey, you've had, like, Jack Daniels, Jim mm-hmm. Beam, Evan. Well, like and the thing of it Brown. is, too, is, like, most most people don't give a shit what kind of whiskey they're drinking. No. It's only a few select people, like, Kind of like us, how we're, we want to try different types of whiskeys because, like, that's that's kind of what we're interested yeah. in, you know. Yeah. Like we want to we want to see what else is out there instead of always drinking the same shit. Yeah. So I mean, so like, so when I was in when I was in school and in my fraternity, so we have like, you know, in like Greek life, you have like a lineage, right? So like you have you know like a like a big brother and big you know grand big whatever big sister through sororities, but so we had lineage liquors. So we had like, um, you know, it was just like some liquor that was like, you know, kind of embodied like your lineage, I guess. And uh, mine happened to be Evan Williams Green Label, which is if you know if you guys have had it, probably have. It's bottom shelf like rock gut whiskey, <laughs> like white trash blue collar kind of whiskey. Yeah, but it's like I don't know, it was just, cheap shit. Yeah, it is. But you know, that's like. I don't know. Like a lot of people grow up on that stuff. I though, feel like know? I have like a you know pretty pretty good taste for whiskey, but like if it comes down to it, I'm taking Evan Green Label all day. Yeah, sorry about it. Because it's know? just you know like for sure like I know it's bad. 
<laughs> I know it tastes <laughs> horrible. I, I wasn't gonna say that, but... too. and it's cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I don't know. Well, like, I mean, so our last point here is is the world's best Tennessee. Yeah. And so so this one this one I pulled out one you know Tennessee whiskey because you got Jack Daniels you know it's like one of the biggest brands and um you know every everybody's had Tennessee whiskey in some form yeah. at some point in time. And, you know, it's in the South, so we got to, you know, let the South represent a little bit. A little bit more <laughs> Southern than Kentucky. Sorry to our Kentucky people, but it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, so we have Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey. So uh, the story behind this, so Uncle Nearest uh, was a was a former slave. His name was Nathaniel Nearest Green. Um, and he was actually the person who taught the art of distillation to Jack Daniel. Yeah. So this is the, so Uncle Nearest was the guy who taught Jack Daniel how to distill whiskey. Yeah, when you told me that, I thought that was pretty badass, isn't it? You know, like, like this is this is basically like, and like so I, so obviously like Uncle Nearest doesn't have anything to do with this company. It's just named after him. And yeah, was, and, you know, I'm assuming they probably use some of his mash recipes and stuff like that if they could find them. But this just the story behind this is is super cool. Yeah, and that's one that I wanna I wanna we can actually get this bottle here. Um, I've actually found a couple stores on really? the island that have this bottle. Bet. So we'll definitely okay, do yeah. that one uh, pretty soon, and we'll get more into that story because I like that story is like I like that a lot. Yeah, and it's like super old school, super old school vibe to it. So absolutely, yeah, we'll definitely have to get a bottle or two. They're not. Uh, I don't think they're too expensive. So I think there was. I think those were like um, the ones I was looking at were like fifty, sixty bucks a bottle. So it's that's not, not bad. Yeah. For like so a better whiskey, it's not. It's really nothing. So then, with with uh, the this high west here, um, w- out of let's do the whole out of one to ten, where do you think you, you you'd rate it? Let me get a let me get a chill taste. Out of all the whiskeys <laughs> we've done on the show, yeah, this is the best. Really, this is the best. Okay, yeah, I would. Uh, out of ten, I'm gonna give this like a like a seven point nine. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, I almost feel like it tasted better warm. Yeah, I think it tasted yeah. better warm than it did cold. I would I would like it chilled without ice. Yeah, I think Cause that because it's, it's a little bit watered down now. Yeah, and it kind of. I don't know if anybody's it, gonna what is it gonna be able to really catch. Uh, those two sips I took after I poured it up in my cup, I kind of tried not to make a face. I don't know if anybody noticed or not, but I guess I think I'm going to rate it probably like I'm going to go a 6.9. Yeah. That's just me though. Yeah. Like, like I, I said, I think it's better warm. So if, if I was to rate it on a warm level, I would say probably like a 7.5. I think this is the, I think this, this whiskey has the smoothest finish. Um, out yeah. of all of them that we've done, with the exception of the screwball, but the screwball is like sugary as I'll get up. Yeah, I mean, I feel like screwball is in its own lane because yeah, it, it has it's a be. sweeter it's sweet, whiskey. Sweet, like you it's, know, it's not just flavored. It's I went, we already got another bottle on Balladonna. <laughs> the screwball is good. Yeah. I'll give it. You know, like, I, I was kind of harsh on them on the uh, on that episode, <laughs> but I, since then I killed the rest of that of that bottle that we had, and I've definitely had a little bit of this bottle, and it's good. Yeah. Like it's it's good stuff. Yeah. Like honestly, like I like it warm, but then pour it over ice and let it get like that little bit of chill. You talking about this? No. Or are you the, talking about the screwball? The screwball. Okay. I like it. I like it like poured warm, <clears throat> poured room temp, and yeah. then like just over ice. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Absolutely. It gets a little bit thick once you put it in the in the freezer. Yeah. It <laughs> the, yeah. And that's what they say it's better like it's it's best when it's like in the freezer and it and it kind of gets that, yeah, that, that ice thickness. That thick to it super ice cold almost like um like jack honey does yeah like the sugar in it kind of makes it a little thicker i can almost drink it like like it's water yeah it's good it's good so yeah but gotta drink it straight i'm a but, i'm a flavored whiskey kind of person i guess yeah, i like it i'm not and i really like that yeah like it's it's not just like like crown apple or like you know like some of those other like flavored blended whiskeys like it's like flavored flavored like yeah. it tastes like peanut butter yeah, it tastes like you're eating a spoonful of Jif <laughs> with some alcohol on it, but it's good. It was good stuff. But yeah, I would honestly, in my opinion, I think this is the best bottle we've had so far. Definitely, definitely the best looking bottle, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I think I so like too. I, I love, love the, the I, love I love the vibe of that whole box. What is it called again? Like like hand blown. Yeah, look. hand blown. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it actually is. Hand well, blown, but it, it definitely gets that look. Yeah, you can still see the little, like the bubbles and some of the particles yeah. in the glass. You you are not gonna be able to see it on the camera, but I mean, yeah, I like it. It's just super old school looking bottle. Yeah, like I was saying, I've been watching Hell on Wheels and these dudes like. Sitting in an old tavern, like you know, <laughs> drinking out of bottles that look like this. Yeah, this bottle's been catching my eye for a long time, and it's and got the uh, the the cork cap. Yeah, yeah, for it. I'm glad. I'm glad. I I haven't had this bottle yet until now. I'm yeah. glad I saved this for the show because I've been looking at that for months. And yeah, months. yeah, but yeah. So I guess uh, we can kind of get into a little bit of discussion. So this is a this is a topic that Dylan's had on here um, for. I don't know, a couple of weeks now. Yeah, been, at least uh, the last like two weeks. Kind of wait for a wait for a good time to talk about it, but yeah. So obviously, like, you know, I don't want. I'm not. I don't want to talk about like the news about it or nothing like that. But with COVID nineteen, basically the topic that I kind of, you know, I talked to my dad about this, and he's he's actually the one that gave me the the idea of it is how. How can or how have people benefited from COVID-19? Whether whether it's learning something new, spending more time with family, getting back in touch with maybe your creative side, you know, kind of reevaluating your finances, um, your health situation. Are you going back to school and whatnot? And um, obviously for you, a big one would be Going back to school. Yeah, so I I just added that in there before the show. But, um, you know, I think that if you're one of those people that are working and trying to get back in school or going to school for the first time, whatever, I think this is like a golden opportunity, and you're probably loving loving being off work. You know? Yeah. Obviously, it's rough if you're, like, paid hourly and you're not getting a paycheck right now. But just having that extra time for your schoolwork and not having to worry about going to work or staying late or like, you know, having to be up early. So you don't want to stay up late studying and doing homework. Like this is like, this is like a golden opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Even, um, so like most schools now are like going to only online classes, like my school. So I was already in, um, just online classes, but my school since, you know, all this is kind of kicked off. They are only doing like all their, um, in like in how like classroom classes yeah. have gone to online so like even my um online classes and they're like my professors have taken on some of those students and in that like you know it's kind of changed up the format of the class a little bit um like all my like the rest of my exams are going to be like unproctored online on your own but that also being said like they're like the questions are a little bit harder and like the time limits are you know pretty rough but you know just overall like it's so much nicer just being able to focus in like that being like the focus of my day pretty much is to like get this homework done. And like I have time to like slow myself down so I don't have to like cram like all my studying into a couple nights Mm -hmm. and like I can spread it out across the week and like study how I want to, I can make my notes and like all that to make my study material for the exam in advance, which is like, fantastic for me because i'm a notorious procrastinator when yeah. it comes to school work i i that's something that i've kind of battled with um a lot of my life is being being a pro- procrastinator just waiting yeah. to the last minute to do absolutely anything no matter it doesn't it doesn't matter what it is that's yeah. something that i've struggled with and i'm constantly like trying to build um myself a better habit um and trying not to be a procrastinator yeah I'm the exact same way, you know, like, and, and it's like this. So take exactly what we're doing right now. We're re- recording this podcast and I, we're actually doing like the video portion of it. And it's there's that part of me that can so easily just be like, nah, we don't need to do the video. We got yeah. the audio, yeah. whatever. But it's it's doing it's for me. It's it's like making it a point like, no, I'm going to do the video because this is something that I've been wanting to do for the longest time and it's because of procrastinating is the reason why that i i've waited so long to start doing anything i've been doing like photography and stuff but as far as like video stuff like this is the most basic i think the most basic uh way to kind of just start out doing anything video related 
yeah. is at least recording a podcast. Yeah, and I mean, you get, I mean, it's giving you plenty of practice and like, because each 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 time we've like uploaded the video, like you've definitely gotten faster at it, and it's yeah. gotten a, like it's gotten cleaner each time. Yeah. So, you know, I, th- I definitely think that's good. That Granted, I mean, I go literally. YouTube is my savior. I go to YouTube for absolutely anything I'm trying to learn or try to th- yeah. solve. Like, literally, the reason why I've gotten faster is just because I've gotten on YouTube. I'm like, how to edit faster, how to do this, how to do that. And, I mean, I, it may, it doesn't stick with me right away. And each time I kind of have to go back and watch, like, the same video over again to kind of to uh, uh, remember exactly what how I did it and whatnot. But definitely, like, it's gotten, it's gotten faster each time. And uh, I'm enjoying it, too. I'm having a lot of fun being able to edit these videos. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, like, it's definitely, you've definitely gotten faster with it, but, like, it's gotten better, too. Like, the last one we did was, like, tenfold better than the first one. Yeah. The first one was good, but, like, the, yeah. I think the last one, it just came out so much more clear, and, like, it just, I don't know, I, th- I thought it was a lot better. Yeah. And we, like, worked, uh, I think it was a little bit cleaner with, like, the video angles, too. Yeah, 100%. Granted, granted in the first one, we had the, the cameras cut out. Yeah. Part of it, but. Well, and that's the other thing. And uh, as far as with the vi- with the cameras is I don't have the the right equipment to be able to. to so most cameras are set to a, a limit uh, that you can record to. So both the cameras that I have um, are set to only 30 minutes. And then so a lot of times when we get recording, it's hard to kind of catch that 30 minute mark, especially right. if we're in a topic or we're, we're deep in a discussion. Right. And I'm like, you know. So like right now we're at 27 minutes. I'm trying to make it a point. Like okay, as soon as that hits, as soon as it stops recording, hit record, so we don't have that that blackness in the video. Which we might. There might be like a one or two second, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. But like I said, I don't have the proper equipment. They make they make little monitors that you can attach to your cameras that um allow you to be able to re- record for however long that you want continuous yeah. recording. Um, the thing of it is, is just not having the access to go get it right now and i mean at the end of the day like it's not something that's in dire need it's like we're getting by and we're doing just fine i think we're doing good without it but i'm a big uh big fan of that if you uh don't need it you know yeah you know if you can work around it then do it yeah so my my dad kind (laughs) of the only time the only time it really gets if if you're if you're trying to just skate by the only time like you know it's necessary to upgrade is is when it starts to become a hassle for you yeah. like it starts it starts yeah. making you counterproductive yeah, yeah, exactly so but yeah so i mean i guess you know that definitely kind of falls into uh so we have like a couple topics written down um to talk about you know and ways that people can ben- benefit from uh from the whole rona season situation we're in but uh yeah you know think you know learning something new you know take this time like you're just chilling what else are you gonna do yeah you know? Like, honestly, I'm getting tired of, like, playing Call of Duty. <laughs> and, like, I mean, granted, we did get a couple wins. Yeah, we caught a couple that out cu- couple Warzone dubs, <laughs> you know. It is what it is, yeah, you, know, you know. But uh, we, yeah, we're getting better at that. Yeah. Hey, learning something new. Hey, yeah. You know. I mean, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, take this time to, you know, learn something. Like, better yourself somehow. Like, learn, like. Yeah. Like, what you said, uh, um, you and Courtney are doing, like, the calligraphy thing. Yeah, which honestly we haven't touched since we bought it. We the first day we got it, we were we were all excited about doing it. Um, I will say it kind of did come a little natural to me, more so than her, and she was kind of getting a little frustrated with yeah, me. I would, she, I would get frustrated. She was like, "How are you so good at this?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just, I guess I just, I don't know. I I like to write. I cha- actually changed up my. This is completely random, but I changed up my the way I wrote or the way I write." Uh, a few years ago, my dad actually writes like a lot of things in like capital letters or he has like really nice cursive. That's how my dad. And is. so I was like looking at my handwriting. I'm like, I don't really like mine. So I switched it up and it actually took me a little bit to kind of go from writing in all caps to regular like lowercase letters. But now like it's a complete struggle for me to write in lowercase letters now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and a lot so of people have commented on my handwriting since then, since I've changed have it. Really like, good handwriting. That it's like, it's it really is, good. It is fantastic, but I mean, I don't know. I think that's like a, 
like I guess it's like a maybe an old school thing. I don't know. But yeah, like, I, I think my so. My dad does that. Yeah, my dad writes in all caps most of the time. And, but he also has good handwriting. Yeah, like I wouldn't expect him to. Yeah, but he does. I mean, my dad was. I don't. I don't know if it maybe has to do with the time, but he was you know born in the fifties. So I mean. I don't know if maybe that was I mean, just my, a popular. I was born in like sixty three. Yeah, so maybe it was like a popular thing a during the ten to twenty year period. But yeah. who knows? Yeah. So if, uh, any of you boomers out there? <laughs> 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 no, nah. but uh, you know, I mean, let us. You know, is, is is that a thing? Is that like an old school thing? Yeah. Like, honestly, I kind of want to know. Like, yeah. Because my my handwriting is like. It 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 depends definitely on takes. The day. You know, like you, you wouldn't think that you know handwriting would be something that is kind of hard to learn but when you've been writing a certain way for your whole life growing up and then you decide to switch it it's it kind of unless you really like like me I for some odd reason I really wanted to switch the way I I wrote things down yeah I made it a point to purposely write everything in all caps and now it's just like it's just natural it's just completely natural I can't write any other way so did you have like teachers in school that like forced you to write in cursive? When I was in ele- I think elementary school, like I know, is you, about I the know only. we like we like learned cursive. Yeah, and I think that's pretty standard. But like it was like preschool and elementary school is I, the is when I was forced to, and then honestly, I think towards once I like got to middle school, it was kind of like nothing. Like yeah, so like my I think it was sixth grade, my sixth grade history teacher used to make – we used to write whole papers. She would f- make us, like, handwrite a whole essay in cursive. Everything we wrote had to be in cursive. Yeah. When we put our name on a worksheet, in cursive. Yeah. When we, like, wrote any – literally anything down had to be in cursive. Yeah. And, like, I don't, honestly, I've heard that they don't do that anymore. No, I don't schools. think they like, do. I've heard, like, cursive is not a requirement anymore. I don't think they do. Which is crazy to me. Yeah. Like, but – Guess uh, guess we're just getting old. Yeah, you know? <laughs> times are changing. I guess I don't know. I, I mean, think honestly, that like I, re- I mean like realistically, like we're not we're not old no, at all. We're not but, at um, all. There's like a huge difference in like school now for like for like I'd say like middle school, high school people than when it, than we were, like when we were in school. Yeah, like it's well, it's totally different. And the thing I don't know. I think that I think it's important to be able to write in cursive because I mean yeah you I had to go through it so. I guess, well, let's kind of maybe break it down. Like, so what are, what are some reasons that you would need to write in cursive for? Nowadays, not much, to be honest. I think that maybe just it, letters is a big so, thing. Okay. So when it, like my, okay. So like back to the handwriting thing, <laughs> my handwriting is like, is like a really kind of like messed up hybrid between just like just normal handwriting and cursive. And I think that's why my handwriting like doesn't look the greatest. Yeah, because it's like it's not definitive at all. Like sometimes like I'll like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I'll write my my A's like a, like a cursive capital A or something. But then other times I'm just like ah, whatever. Yeah, just yeah. Throw it on there. I I think for me like definitely if I take my time when I'm writing it, I can make it look. Oh, I can make mine look like good. five good. times better than what it does, but. But like ninety percent of the time when I'm like handwriting anything, yeah. like I'm just I'm kind of in a rush. I just bam, 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 like jot it down and that's it. Yeah, you know. But, but I mean, I mean, actually, I have one of my notebooks back here. I can yeah, I have it on my. I'm not gonna show up. It's, <laughs> it's whatever. Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> the point is like learn some. Try to do. Try to learn something new. Like take some time. Don't play so much Call of Duty. Take an hour out of your day and just kind of research something that you're maybe curious about that you want to know. I I researched. Um, there's this dude I follow on Instagram, and he's always posting on his stories this like online board game called Cash Flow. And so I I kind of Google it, and uh, it's it's made by um a, the guy who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad, okay. like Robert okay. Robert. Kiyosaki, I think is. Yeah, I don't know his name. I know the book. But yeah, I, I think that's. I, I it, think but. that's how you say his name. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna. I don't want to. I want to say it's. You know that guy. <laughs> you you never seen that dude before? No, I mean, yeah, I, I know Robert T. Kiyosaki. Okay, I was right. I know the book, but I don't know. But yeah. basically, it's a game that kind of teaches you 
um, the fundamentals of like investing into like the stock market, real estate and whatnot. Uh, and really the best way I can explain like for you to got for you to, if you're interested and want to learn how to play it, uh, is to literally just start playing it. Uh, I, I completely agree with yeah. that. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's basically like you start the game and it's, it says like stock market for kids basically is kind of like the reason behind the game. Um, oh, I thought you were pointing something. Um, <laughs> I don't, I was looking at the bottle. <laughs> anyways, um, it's kind of like the stock market for kids. So basically you can kind of just screw around and hypothetically it's, it says you may be an engineer, you may be a doctor or whatever the case. Uh, and it tells you, um, this is your salary. This is your, uh, your cash flow. This is your payday amount. And you have like a little financial report that shows like your income, your expenses, your liabilities, your assets. And then in the, cer- in the center, there's a little circle Okay, and this, that circle represents the rat race, and the goal is to get out of the everyday rat race that every that people, everybody, like every, yeah, everybody knows like what the rat race is. Kind of falls in. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then outside the circle is where like the investors and um, bas- yeah, the investors live basically the big the big dogs the the people right. who like the Warren Buffett. have yeah the Warren Buffets yeah. and um, so it kind of goes along and it says. You know, you roll, there's die, you click roll, and it rolls a die, and it says, like, um, do you want to make a small or big, uh, uh, small or big opportunity? And it's, like, small opportunities cost 5000 or less, big opportunities calls, cost 6000 or more. <clears throat> and you roll small or big and whatever, and say, let's say you roll big, it, it says, okay, here's a eight-plex or eight-unit duplex um uh, for two hundred thousand dollars, here's your uh, monthly return of a thousand dollars, and here's like the down pay. Do you want to buy or do you want to pass? And you can buy and you can pull out a loan to buy it, and then obviously, like that's gonna help. That's gonna be an asset, but but also a liability for you because you had to pull out a loan for it. Right. But basically, you keep you kind of just. Keep rolling. You kind of want to make smart decisions. You want to buy like the real estate. You wanna you want to buy some shares in in a certain stock. Um, and then it also has features like, oh, you just got uh, a divorce. You gotta you lose all your money, or you just got audited this much. You lose half your money. Or you want to buy, you want to go on a family vacation. You know, pay two thousand dollars. Like you don't get an option to really. It's kind of throwing in like real life situations yeah. and to where you would have to pay certain amounts. But basically the goal is to earn enough money to get you out of the rat race so you can get to the outer part of the of the board game and then earn enough money to win from there. Right. I want to play that. It teaches you. It. it really like I've only played it the last two days and literally like I just started playing it and I quickly kind of understood like, okay, I kind of get how right. you need to play this. Yeah. And it's really cool. It's it's fun yeah, because so, it, it gives you like fake, a fake money, a fake job. Right, right. And it kind of is like, it gets you that that dopamine feeling like, oh man, I want to I want to yeah. make more money. I want to win. Yeah. So when I was in, um, I think I was in eleventh grade. Like <clears> my, uh, honestly, I couldn't. I don't even remember what the class was called. Sorry, uh, but uh, sorry to all my high school teachers if you ever listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm just I laughing because of the way you said sorry. Just, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was a little bit, but anyway, so like we uh, we played this game and it, it wasn't really a game. I mean, like you can like just get on and do it, and it's like um, it's on Market Watch, and it's basically like a, okay, it's, it's like a stock market simulator. So yeah. basically, like you can set it up however you want it. You can like so like we could make a like a group, um, and then you have like people like not kind of competing, not really competing. But, you know, the way we did it when I was in high school was that we, like, we did it by class. And uh, we, you know, basically competed. And then we had to, like, do a project at the end of it. But, you know. Anyway. So, like, basically, you get, like, a starting amount of money. And then you basically just play the stock market. It goes off the live tickers, you know. And it goes off the live market and whatever the market's doing at the time. But then, like, you know, you're just basically, like, have to, like, make money. Mm -hmm. You know, your end goal is to, like, you know, like, 
come out positive, you know? So yeah. I think we started with like a hundred thousand dollars, which is, I ain't, no, I ain't doing that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to like do stuff like that or like play penny stocks. You know, I yeah. used to dabble in penny stocks a little bit. You yeah. Know, and I made a little bit of money. Yeah. I did a little, not, little not bit a of research lot. on penny stocks yeah, back I mean, in the it's, day. It's, it's something to do where it's like, it, it's real money. Like, you know, you can like say like, all right, cool. I'm going to just drop a hundred bucks into this and play around with it. Yeah. Like you can do that. And then, you know, you can actually end up making some money and make some gas money off of it. Beer money. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, but it's still like, so Wolf of Wall Street, that's kind of how they started. Yeah. In the movie. Yeah. And, uh, and so the Wolf of Wall Street was like actually like a true story. It's, it's too. a bad ass movie. It's a bad ass movie, but it's a true story. Yeah. And, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, the guy, like the the guy, the the Wolf of Wall Street, like the actual dude, um, like I think I think his name was actually Jordan Belfort. I think they like just took it like straight out of the real story and put him. Oh in the shit! But yeah, he um maybe not. I don't know. Need to do Every single research. time I hear that name, all I all that plays in my head is Mac Miller. Bro. <laughs> Jordan Belfort. <laughs> <laughs> was that Mac Miller? I, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was. I don't think no, okay. I'm gonna, I I gotta look this up because I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so you know, I mean, that's how the Wolf of Wall Street got started. They were literally like selling penny stocks. Yeah, that's the dude. But yeah, so I mean, you know, start somewhere. Oh you know? shit! I mean, obviously, like, <laughs> obviously, probably skip out on the quaaludes <laughs> and, the, and the drugs and stuff. But yeah, you know, I mean, okay, I was wrong. Know. It was by we- it's by Wes Welker and Dill. I don't know why. Wes- that's what it says. Wes Walker. Walker. Oh, Walker. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, no. Like, Wes Walker is a football player. That's what I thought, but I was like, <laughs> ah, I just read it wrong. Oh, okay. All right. But, yeah, so, I mean, you know, take, so, take the time. Like, you got the, you got the extra time. You know, put it into something that could, like, even, like, okay, like, penny stocks. You know, it seems pointless. seems like you're just playing around, which, you know, you kind of are. But, I mean, it can turn into something, you know, you yeah. can really learn how the stock market works. You can learn, you know, the ins and outs of it and then start investing some real money into yeah. it. When well, the thing of it and is too, is like, like now more than ever is, you know, has there, there hasn't been a bigger wake up call than now, basically to like a perfect reason why you should be doing something on the side to help earn a second stream of, you know, a second source of income, Yeah. you know, like you, I'm, and I'm specifically speaking to the people who are on like an hourly rate job. Like you're not on salary. You're not guaranteed a paycheck. Like, no. you know, I mean, you guys are struggling right now. Even and even if you're still working, like, you know, your hours may be cut and that gets, you know, yeah. that gets shoddy. Cause if you got bills, then yeah, <laughs> sorry about like the big, you know. the biggest thing is find something that's going to earn you passive income. Yep. You know, the point of passes passive income is to earn money without you doing anything. Obviously you have to do a lot in the beginning to set that up. But well, once you, that, to be able to like, so say you're investing, I mean, you gotta have the money to invest, you know, like you gotta be able to like take that money that like, you gotta be like, okay, I have this that I don't really need. Yeah, I'm going to start I'm going to start investing it so this money can work for me instead of me just like either it either it's sitting in my in my savings account and not doing anything, not making money for me or me just like spending it on like a case of beer on Friday night, you know? Yeah. So actually, I just thought of this to give you guys some homework. And I want to the thing of it is, is so I know you guys or some one of you guys actually does it. And I want you to comment um, on whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Um, what you found, but look up the 4% rule. Okay. And I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Just look at the 4% rule and tell me what you find. And if you, you'll know what I'm talking about once you find it. But if you can follow that, and that's something that I want to follow. Um, if you can follow that, that's a great way to, to set yourself up for future success. So I don't know if you, do you know about the four percent rule? Um, it sounds familiar, but I couldn't tell you anything about okay. it. Okay, okay. I'll look it up. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Hey, next episode. Yeah, we'll talk about it. So, with that, 
obviously we're very big on, you know, telling you guys to learn something new. Um, but the other thing is, is basically, uh, what a lot of people can relate to is the fact that you've been able to spend more time with your family and, you know, like I'm sure, you know, as far as siblings goes, I know I grew up in a house of two sisters that used to always beat my ass because they were bigger <laughs> than me. Now they don't do that anymore, but, um, <clears throat> siblings kind of can get a little bit heated, but understand like, like right now is a great time to really get in touch with your family. If you guys aren't already, you know, yeah, take absolutely. this, take this time to spend quality time with each other. Really get to know like your brother, or your sister, really get to know your parents, really get to know your grandparents. If you're fortunate enough of having them in your, in your life and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you know, if you're in like a situation like we are where you're like, you know, away from your family, you know, can't like go home, whatever, like, like mil- military, you know, yeah. first and foremost, but yeah. you know, there's a lot of other people that have like, you know, made decisions like to move for work, whatever. And, uh, you know, or like away from their families, they can't like physically spend time with them. Yeah. But I mean, you know, call them, your friends, call them, you know, honestly, like, you know, I've been like talking to a lot of like, you know, my friends and stuff, you know, on call of duty that I haven't, that I haven't talked to in like, you know, a long time. You know, yeah. like a yeah. like a year or two, you know, and like, you know, just any literally anything, just talk to people because I mean, realistically, like you're quarantined and you're big chilling. So what else are you gonna do? You know, yeah, take that time to like, you know, reconnect with people that you haven't talked to in a long time or whatever, you know. And so, what I mean with that, um, we can go ahead and hit all these points, but at the same time, like. A lot of these points are just, they're kind of like, I think that this whole reevaluating the health and um, finances, we can probably save that for a future episode. Because that one's... 4% rule. Yeah. Finance. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that has that has something to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so, but yeah, I mean, you know, take that time. Like, I mean, my girlfriend was... uh, Bree was pretty mad at me last night. Well, not mad, not mad, <laughs> but she was uh, she was giving me some shit about drinking a whole two liter of Coke Zero yesterday. She Co- was like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> you drank a whole two liter of Coke?" So yeah, so I went to the store yesterday and I got some. Jesus two Christ! So, so you guys know me. I'm like, you know, I'm about a bargain. So two liters is so much cheaper here than buying like cans, right? Okay. So I'm like, okay. okay. So I got a two liter and I got a bottle of rum and I'm like. You know, I'm like, okay, so I was drinking the two liter because, you know, I've been drinking a ton of water. That's like, oh, this is boring. Water's boring. So <laughs> <laughs> I got my water right here. <laughs> yeah, but like. I just the so, cheap shit, too. Everybody in Hawaii knows what this. This is shit. So, like. Cents for a one liter. No, nah, this one's like 79 cents, I think. But. That's what I'm saying, bro. Hey, yeah, 99 for cents for a one liter. <laughs> but yeah, no, so I was, uh, you know, got a, got some two liters, got some rum. So I was drinking it with the rum, then I'm like, all right, you know. Only I need to stop drinking. I had like two, three, four rums, <laughs> r- rum and cokes, whatever. God and, damn, dude. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I was just like drinking on it, and before I know it, it's pretty much gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really. I can. So I, I like Coke Zero, and I found myself. It's got, it's got aspartame in it. Which we yeah. all know it's bad. Yeah, I found myself some days. I've drank. I've been. I've actually cut back. Uh, I've made it a point to cut back on drinking them so much because I noticed that I was like, okay, I'm drinking way too much Coke yeah, Zero every like, single there's day. N- there's really n- like, there's no like calories in it. There, yeah. I think there's just a touch of sodium in it. So yeah. Like, like, oh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. And then before you know it, you're down a two liter. Yeah. Full of aspartame. God damn, dude. A whole two liter shit. Bro, but you remember <laughs> when we first got here and you and I were like some fiends for some Mountain Dew? Bro? Yep. <laughs> yep. Bro, honestly, that was, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, that was. All because of Sergeant Bowen. It was. Shout out, JB. Yeah. Always, like, coming you, to work. Dude was, like, literally a PT stud, and he drank Mountain Savage. Dew, like, Savage. first thing in the morning. Like, every, Mountain Dew was his water. Like, yeah. literally it was. Honestly. We I, would go to the field. This man bring a whole <laughs> case of freaking Mountain Dew. I'm like, dude. Honestly, I think if he cut out that Mountain Dew, he would, like, no doubt in my mind, he'd be a professional athlete. Bruh, maybe he was Honestly, an athlete. Honestly, he could probably compete with it. He was an honest. athlete. I'll say that. <laughs> he was a he was an yeah, athlete. I mean, it was it was almost embarrassing, dude. Because I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm like trying to be healthy as hell, 
And this dude is outperforming me in every single way. Like, Everybody, dude. <laughs> Everybody. But, yeah. I mean, it's, some people are just built like that, you know what I mean? Some people could do stuff that's horrible for you, and, like, it just doesn't affect them. Yeah, yeah. But, well, I mean, I mean, I guess that that brings us to the end of the, the uh, yeah, we podcast. We, yeah, we did good. We did good for just the two of us. We tried to find yeah. some... Uh, you know, some, um, some kind of we so next week we uh, we dropped a couple of our uh, discussion topics uh, for this week. So next week when we're all together, we have the whole squad, the whole gang together. We're uh, we're gonna definitely fire into those. Yeah, and uh, see what you guys think. Those are I think those I think are gonna be some big uh, feedback type topics. Yeah, you know that I want like I really want to hear what other people think about yeah. it. You know, I mean, and again. And I'm specifically speaking to Rhett because I know how he's going to feel after <laughs> this is posted. But, dude, it's damn near almost 630, <laughs> and you ain't said nothing to us yet. You ain't called us back. You ain't texted us back. So, like I said, man, the show must go on. We got to we gotta give our – Yeah, we got to do it for the fans. Yeah, no. you know, I know. And only because I know, like, if we, if we miss one time, bro – I'm telling you, it's, it's gonna that. spiral. It's gonna end up. Oh, damn. Okay, we're, we're six, gonna. Yo, but on a good note, we're six weeks into this podcast. Six weeks in, six bro. Weeks. This is dope. Blows my mind. <laughs> I will so, say, I hope maybe we've inspired one of you guys to to start your own podcast yeah, so because Brett, Brett was telling me uh, he had a buddy that was like wanting to start one. Yeah, he's like, yo, I want to like. He's like, yeah, I asked if you could like use the equipment and stuff, and like, you know. I mean, if that's it's gonna come out a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit, you know. Gotta pay some rent. You know, pay some rent saying. for this stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, I mean, honestly though, like, hopefully this has inspired somebody to do something. Whether it's just get drunk on a bottle of whiskey, I don't care. Fuck it. Shout us out, be like, yo, you guys inspired me. <laughs> what I'm was that one podcast from Drunker and Cooter Brown? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> what was that one podcast you said about uh, somebody like uh, the most randomest thing? You were telling me something like last weekend, I think it was. You're like, some dude's doing some stupid shit. That was that was Rhett talking about the dudes in ski mask. Yeah, that was Rhett talking about that. Yeah. Is it a podcast or like, yeah, a, like a podcast? What These the dudes like wearing, wearing like wearing ski mask? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't listened to it. So if you guys honestly, I'll get with them. I'll listen to it. Yeah, because I kind of want to hear what it's about. Apparently, it's funny. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in for episode six of the Whiskey Ways podcast. Um, toast it up. Toast kill it up this, for uh, sure. Kill this whiskey to week six. Yeah, and, man, that uh, might we'll be all be you, We'll be back man. at you next week and uh, have a new a new interesting bottle. We'll see what we can find during yeah. this quarantine. You know Again, let us know. If there, ha- if there isn't anything that you guys have told us yet, let us know. Again, share this podcast everywhere facebook instagram snapchat twitter your mom your friends yes your uncle get us out there everybody your grandma like send us out get us out there because honestly like without you guys we like we would probably still be doing it but uh without you guys we would be so much less motivated yes and uh you know i think maybe also I really kind of put this, some of this content together for our for our guests. You yeah, know, obviously it's stuff that like we kind of, that we want to talk about, but it's stuff that I try to feel like you know that I feel like would be interesting for people to listen to, people that we know, yeah. and stuff like that. So, all right, appreciate y'all listening. Doses. Peace out. <laughs> See you next week.